Angels are a kind of celestial entity that catch our interest, not only because they are mentioned rather often in the Bible, but also because of the intricate nature of their tales and the heavenly tasks that they are appointed to do. Angels are celestial beings that captivate the interest of people, including those who are not Christians. They are endowed with supernatural powers, and they are responsible for protecting and guarding the lives of God's children by attending to their needs in accordance with the commands of the Father. Let's uncover a lesser-known aspect about a specific angel, which will lead us to a deeper understanding of the concept of the spiritual realm. The Bible states in the book of Hebrews that there are thousands upon thousands of angels in heaven. However, the word of the Lord presents us with the names of only a few. Three of these names are known to most people who study the scriptures. But there is a fourth name that almost no one has heard of, and it is about these four beings that we will talk about in today's video before we proceed. It's important to make something very clear. Angels are not spirits of people who have died. The claim that good people who die on earth become angels of God is false. The Bible is very clear in stating that we human beings and angels are not part of the same class, massive creatures of the Lord. Let's read what is written in Psalm 8. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Another important point is that among the celestial beings we are going to study, there are also the fallen angels who were cast out of heaven and thrown to the earth. The first angel mentioned in the Bible is Satan. According to Genesis 1, on the second day of creation, after God had already created, day and night he created the heavens. Some scholars say that on that same day the angels were created, and among them was one who was remarkable for his beauty and power. He is a celestial creature who serves as a messenger on special missions, and in addition to that, he is a tremendous fighter. Miguel the Archangel is one of the most well-known and powerful angels that God has created. He is a member of a higher order among the angels. The book of Revelation 12 shows us that it was he who led the army of angels in heaven against Satan. Another passage that is quite remarkable is in the book of Jude, which tells us that Michael fought against the devil for the body of Moses. Notice that as powerful as he was, Michael showed wisdom and not defaming the enemy, but letting God rebuke him. Let's read what is written. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. And in the book of Daniel, it is reported that God sent an angel to deliver a message to the prophet. But the prince of Persia, who was an agent of Satan, tried to hinder the messenger. So God sent Archangel Michael to assist. See what Daniel said about this event. Next to me, there was a man who touched me and gave me strength. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for. I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me. Twenty-one days, then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come, brothers and sisters. All these accounts show us that Michael is indeed one of the most powerful celestial beings. It was Gabriel who delivered the news to Mary that she would give birth to the Son of God. Gabriel also appeared to interpret Daniel's vision about a ram and a goat. Gabriel is known as the angel of messages and important missions from God. 
Just think back to the Christmas stories that we have heard since we were children. We have heard them our entire lives. Gabriel appeared in the form of a man and explained that the vision was about the end of times. Later this angel appeared again to Daniel bringing understanding of his vision after he prayed for forgiveness for the sins of his people. Let's read what the Bible says while I, Daniel, was praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and making my request to the Lord, Lord my God, for his holy hill while I was still in prayer. Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in swift flight. About the time of the evening sacrifice, he instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, a word went out which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. And many years later, the angel appeared to the priest, Zechariah, when he was offering incense to God in the temple. Gabriel prophesied to Zechariah that he and his wife would have a son named John the Baptist, and that this son would be responsible for preparing the people to receive the Savior. Zechariah doubted the message and as punishment for his unbelief, he was made mute until the child was born. Six months after speaking to Zechariah, the angel Gabriel made an appearance to a young woman named Mary and informed her that she would become pregnant and give birth to the Son of God. Mary was confused about the fact that she was still a virgin, but Gabriel explained that the Holy Spirit would come upon her. Now, let's move on to the last named angel in the Bible, whom the majority of people are not even aware of. His name is either Abdon or Apollon, which are names that mean Angel of the Abyss in Hebrew and Greek. These names refer to the destruction that is referred to in these names. This angel is mentioned by the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 9 during the sounding of the fifth trumpet. Let's see what the Bible says about him. The fifth Ang sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss when he opened the abyss. Smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss, and out of the smoke locusts came down on the earth. They were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not, not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. As we conclude this episode, we hope you have enjoyed the exploration of the angelic stories a theme that connects us to the divine and helps us better understand our faith. We are reminded of the richness and depth that are contained within the pages of the Bible when we have the opportunity to revisit the narratives of Michael Gabriel and Abaddon. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this journey and it's been great exploring its meaning with you. If you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more engaging content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, stay blessed and keep learning.